So breakouts, but this is going to be the same for all transitions. Yep. It's because it's like it's you, you can break this down until the cows come home, right? I don't know. So let's just say you're coming back to your zone and there's a transition or a breakout, right? Mm -hmm. By being low enough, uh, let's say a D's coming this way, if you come low enough, it's a short area pass. Yep. Okay. If it's a set breakout, or right, you, uh, I hope everybody knows what I mean. The set breakout, or let's say for people that don't understand terms, your team has total possession and they're 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 setting up yep. or everyone's in their spot. Everybody's kind of in their spot yeah. and there's time, right? So let's say there's uh, a D picking up a puck and he's looking, and you see everyone kind of that's the wrong way. There's a D, right, and there's a winger, winger. And we're going to break out. So now the centerman, what you want to do is support support the puck. Okay, if he's, if he's wheeling, let's say, or if he's making a D to D pass, whatever. What most people tend to do, little kids and people that get impatient, and this is actually something that you have to learn. So if the D's cutting like this, like he should, what a lot of centermen will do is they'll come in like this. They cut a short angle and too high. Okay. So what happens is, what what happens is, if it, common sense is your ass is to the puck, so it's really hard to get that pass. And number two, your distance is a little bit far away from the, you know, it, it just could be a lot easier. So what you always, mostly, I'm not going to say always, what you want to read is when you're breaking. So let's say we're coming out this side. What you want to do is, as you're coming back, is take a different angle. You don't want to come straight on when you have possession. What you want to do is you want to take an angle. So what this angle does is it gets you deeper in your zone. So I like to say, basically come through your crease if you can or as close as, close as you can on a good angle so that when this guy comes out, like let's say it went D to D, okay, and you're coming out, you're at a nice low angle. So like you can come across and you're, you can, you're given a good target the whole time, right, without your ass to the play. And he can see that option a little bit better. And then... If if it's not a great option, you're in a good position to kick out wide. So when he comes up the ice, you're still a nice little pass option. So what what happens too many times is that D just simply go or forwards just simply go on on bad angles, right? And they end up up the ice and they can't figure out why why isn't he not passing me the puck? Well, one of the reasons he might not be passing the puck is because you know in innocence the uh, the, the D we're talking little kids here right now. Kids go, I can't because I can't see your stick. I can't see your eyes. It's like I see your your ass and your heels and your elbows. I don't see anything that I can pass to. And it's and the other thing is it's a very difficult pass to make a pass with a guy moving off the ice from behind or like on a, on a bad angle. This is a really hard pass. The second thing is is a good chance you got to look back and you might get killed, right? But it's just a really tough pass to make. And when you're when you stretch yourself away from your D too much, there's a lot of bad things that could happen in, in that distance. Right, so that's what that 10, 15 foot, five, 10, 15 foot passes. It's really important to kind of support. That's what I'm talking about support when you don't have the puck. So playing without the puck, right? This D has the puck, and it's like as a centerman, you can make his life a lot easier by being a good support because you give him more options and more time to make to make that pass. Whereas if you go up the ice like this, you, you, he only has a split second to make a pass. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. A couple more. Th I just want to point out a couple things on that too. If you do that, that low and slow kind of thing where you're in that good passing lane, not only do you make everyone else's job easier, you also make your own job easier. Cause when you, when you get that puck, you'll have some speed, first of all, <laughs> that's, that's exactly and you're, right. you're giving yourself more time to make the next decision. So if you catch the pass by, you know, low circle or by the low hash mark in the circle as opposed to the top of the circle you're giving yourself an extra fit whatever it is 15 feet 20 feet before someone's going to be right in your face because that's it's hard for their guys if it's a clean breakout like that it's hard for their guys to get that low to get on you right so and if they do like you said you already have speed and now you can kick out wide and just keep building speed and now that that defenseman will hit you in stride when you're already up ice so there's a lot of benefits uh, for that, that way, aside from just you might get killed and you're making everyone else's job easier, you're making yeah. your own life easier too. You know, yes. and sorry, one no, other no, thing yes, I want to pass fine. out. That's fine. Or uh, one other thing I want to point out is the you're talking about about the passing, and it's people forget that passing takes two people, 
and you're really good at teaching this, the it's not just the passer, it's the guy receiving the pass. You have to be a, go- a good option for that guy to get a clean pass to you. So if you're the guy that's like, oh, my D never passed to me, uh, well, maybe it's you. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's like, you. Ma- maybe it's maybe them, it's you. but maybe it's you. Maybe you're not in a good spot. Maybe you're too far away. Maybe you're not showing stick. Maybe you're not giving a good target. Maybe you're standing still. Maybe there's a whole bunch of things as the receiver of the pass that could make me not want to pass to you. So you need to evaluate that as well. It's not just the passer's fault. So I just want to touch on those those two things that you pointed out there. Yeah. So I want to, and I'm glad you mentioned speed under the puck because that's what actually my next phase was going to be more neutral zone. So like that was that was your defensive zone. So now if we say there's a D to D pass like at the at the neutral zone or in your own zone D to D, let's say, okay. So this guy's got the puck. Uh, it's the same thing, right? So what happens, and I, I have to go over this with centermen quite often, is they like to go like this. They like to go like this. Whoops, that's an arrow the wrong way. He went in both directions at the same time, <laughs> right? So remember, back to the plate. And then so if that puck goes like this, and you've done this curl, by the time you get that, if you're skating, you're going to be, that's a hard pass to make. So what we want to do is make sure that we get, make the pass options easy. So if I, if I'm, and you, and you can screw this up. So let's say D has got the puck and you're coming back and you know, it's going to go D to D or you don't. You're, you're quarterbacking this anyway. So what I want to do is instead of making a button hook like this or curling early like this, when he gets here, that's not right. You're kind of too far. Yeah. You're cutting too far. So what you want to do is have the patience. So this guy's got the puck, the right D has the puck. And what you want to do is you want to angle it so that you're deep and you're almost underneath. So if this guy fires it across, you're underneath the puck. Now that's what we call speed under the puck. But look at the look at how long this guy has to make the like how many options he has. Like as soon as you're coming across, it's that puck. If you're down here, he can lay a flat one for you. And then and you're in a crossover now, so you can have some like exceptional speed. speed right yeah. off the hop. Right? But more importantly, when that comes across, you've got options to right. Your, your stick is in the lane, and you can get that pass at any point except for when you for the like split second if you choose to go wide. But then you can make that a, another option. So there's only like one very very small period that you may not be a good pass option. Yeah, sorry, let me tighten that up just a bit. Sure. Because what you're saying there is you're going to be a pass option for a long period of time yes. because you're you're consistently in a good spot as opposed to you do that button hook they might be able to get it to you let's say for, the button hook here yeah maybe it, when you're at the bottom of that hook that's the only point when they can get it to you whereas if you do that good angle and you're facing them that could be that could be two sec two full seconds where could you're be. facing the guy it and that, that's two seconds that that defenseman yeah. could pass to you yeah so except for if the we go like this yeah except for the split second where you are crossing paths in front of him you're available that entire time so again it goes back to what we just said about the breakout it's like not only are you making that d's job easier you're making your own life easier because now you're you're picking it up low you're picking it up with speed you're picking it up with space and you have many points along which you can get it in that same position where you have good speed, good space, and, and options going right. forward. Yeah, so now if it goes, and, if, and so the same thing, maybe the puck's not going to you, but you are creating yourself as a pass option, okay? So let's say it goes here, and you have a good angle here, right? You're a pass option, pass option, but let's just say there's a winger here. Let's say even say he's stretched right out, right out, the, right, right close to the blue line, mm-hmm. and this D says, oh my God, I can get, I can get this puck up to my winger. Okay, you don't cry because you're actually in a really good position now because now you have speed. So now this winger has an option, is seeing you with speed to either lay it down, right, and you can get it. Maybe he carries it and you got good, right? Maybe he carries it and you yep. got good speed going for a, for a net drive or, or you're, look at what a mess here, right? Or that winger, or, or as you're coming up the ice, uh, he cuts and you're wide or you're coming in kind of together and he can lay one in for you. But it just creates more... Like chip, dump yeah. in, yeah. Or chip, yeah, like if he all, chips it yeah. in, you've got speed to all go help him. Stuff. So it's like yeah. your, your, your offensive play actually started down here. Yeah, from your regroup. Yeah. Whereas... So this is why I want people to understand this. Centerman, forwards, at D, everybody understand this. Whereas if you try to play the offensive game and... <laughs> 
you're, you're a little bit lazier coming back or you're in a hurry to get up back up the ice if if it if it's uh whatever transition it goes d to d or whatever the d has it and you do one of these well there's a lot of mistakes that can happen and if there's a turnover now you're back checking right mm-hmm. and the chances of you getting that pass from this area with the with let's say the o's or the defenders right whatever however you want to put them if you do this now this guy's got to beat one or two guys to get that puck to you if that's the option you want. So if you're skating around going, I never get the puck, just tighten up, getting lower and supporting. And I know it's counterintuitive because we're taught as young ages, get the head man the puck, get the, move the puck forward. And it's and it's true, but it doesn't mean it have to be three zones. I, 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 honestly, 10, 5, 10, 15 foot passes will beat long passes every day. For sure. And, and, and even if you get that pass after you do the button hook, you, there's offsides, so you have to slow down anyways. So if you do, if you curl too early, even if they can get you that puck, now you're catching it either looking back or slowing down, as opposed to gaining speed or in full stride or whatever. If you just take that the little bit longer route where you're putting yourself in a good good position, and if you watch watch NHL games, even junior games, there's very very few long passes, very few. It's it's unless they're doing a stretch to a winger, yeah, like you pointed out. Yeah, there's a like, lot of stretch passes yeah, as you go and right? chip it in, right? So but what that means is that this D might be coming up the ice, and you'll see wingers like this. And even though there's a D here and a D here, and there's another like a, a forward here, it's just sometimes and very often that just that stretch pass where they just chip it yeah. in, so they have pressure going to get yeah, the puck. Count, That's different. Count the passes, man. When you watch yeah. a game, yeah, like the amount of yeah. stretch to short passes, yeah. like the ratio yeah. is going to be off the charts in favor of but, the short ones. But again, and this is what I was going to say too, is that, which let's just say, use that example. So a D stretches a pass out to a winger. And this is like typically higher level guys. So I'm, if I'm confusing anybody, say that never happens in our games. It's just that we're talking high level hockey. You got the D here. If this D makes that stretch pass, if you're the centerman that goes, that's high with like playing high in the zone like this, and this stretch pass doesn't work, and it's it's blocked by maybe the D steps in and knocks it up. Well, now you either have to do a big figure skate or you do this. And if you're a really smart player, you're going to be able to stop and come back. But the problem is, is he's already that gone. Chasing, yeah. So if, yeah. So if you, so this is what we're talking about. You'll just be around the puck more. So if this D was to make this stretch pass and the centerman was like down low like this, and if there's any mistakes that happen, well, then now it's like, say this guy steps it up. Well, now it's like, it's an yeah. angling drill. You're already That's all, it's all yeah. it is, an angling drill, right? So like you're in a better position. So that's what we're saying. Good defense makes good offense. Yeah. 